Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm China. I'm China Mieville. Hi, I'm Keanu Reeves. Uh, thanks for being here. Thank you for your questions. And we're going to jump straight in and see if we can answer them. All right, China, we have a question from Todd. Hi, Todd. How did the two of you meet and how did you decide to collaborate together? What was the first? How did we meet? Did we meet in email first? I, my email met you. Well, your email came to my email. And right. I said, I said, that's not an email I was expecting. <laughs> and um, it kind of went from there. And then we physically met in 2021 in Berlin. Yeah, because uh, we had started talking vaguely on email about the possibility of this. And then I, I think you said, oh, you know, we should meet when possible. That would be really great. And I said, that's wonderful. And then someone at your end said, unfortunately, Keanu is in Berlin at the moment. And I said, OK, this is going to sound creepy. I'm in Berlin. Um, and so, uh, which was pure serendipity. So we uh, met in a hotel lobby. Outside. Outside. Yes. I had coffee and you had... I had breakfast tea. You had breakfast tea. And we had a very nice discussion about uh, your comic and about ideas we could do. Right. How did we decide to collaborate together? Yeah. We talked about it for... Well, a wait. I would say that after saying, I love you, I love your work, then I think I was... Then you had questions. I think I said I love you too as well first. Yeah. But then, yeah. And then... Because I was really nervous about, like, I had a nightmare scenario, which was in that I say, yes, I'd love to do this. And then two years down the line, you're muttering to yourself, I really, really wish I hadn't got this guy to do that. He's really terrible. He has no idea. So I came with questions and concern. And I was like, here are some of my ideas. Do these work for you? Do you like this? Is this OK? You know, because I didn't want to be the wrong person to do it. So we talked about that. and Which I really appreciated because I felt like we were, like, working right away in the best possible way, like laying it out and this is what I have and this is this. And we were talking about the project right away. Yeah. And yeah. it was fun. And we were treating it very seriously. We and wanted to seriously. make sure that we were like right to work for each other, work yeah. for each other, work with each other. Yeah. Um, because it was really like it deserved to be treated seriously from the word go. And it was much better to front load all those discussions and mm. be like, yes, this is actually possibly working. And then relax into seeing what the idea was. Oh, you, I didn't relax, but okay. <laughs> but that's how it started. Okay. Uh, Michael, do I need to read anything else before starting this book? Short answer is no. Um, short and important answer is no. But if you have read some of, if you've read uh, the book, the, the Berserker comic, you will feel certain resonances and mm. certain things. And that, Seems fair? It does seem fair. But I don't think you need to have read the comic to enjoy the novel. No, we were very adamant that like this is a standalone thing. Mm -hmm. This you can come in. I think our editor, Ben, wrote a beautiful thing for when 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 we were first sending out the copies that said, Do you know the the comic Berserker? Great, then you'll love this book. Uh, do you not know the comic Berserker? Great, then you'll love this book. And that is mm -hmm. at least the aspiration. Yes. Christine, Keanu, what was the first China Mieville book you read and which is your favorite? I started with uh, Three Moments of an Explosion, which is a collection of short stories. That's where the explosion was, but more than three moments. And just, I think, I think just so far, I mean, I haven't read your Oh, the, all of it. How dare you? I know, I know, but it's so much to look I forward know. to. I've been doing it a long so time. So much to look forward <clears throat> to. But so, yeah, Three Moments of an Explosion, um, highly recommend it. That's really why um, I sent a call out to see if you'd be interested in doing Berserker, because I thought it would be Yeah. Amazing. And I really appreciated that, because... Because Three Moments of an Explosion is a short story collection, and short stories um, don't get nearly as much love culturally as novels. And mm. so, you know, when you if you publish a short story collection, uh, you are very unlikely to sell anything like as many copies. There's, it, it just for whatever cultural reasons, many more people like full length novels than short stories, and that's fine. But you know, not to yuck anyone's yum. But as someone who loves short stories and who loves writing them and who 
grew up with them being at least as formative on me as, uh, as novels, it was a, a really lovely surprise that that was the book you came, because I'm very, you know, I was, I'm, that doesn't happen all that often. It mm. tends to be the novels that get quoted. So that was a, that was a surprise. Cameron says, what sort of themes or subjects are important for you in your own writing? And what do you hope your readers might come away with after this? What sort of themes? Are subjects? That's your question. Uh, uh, well, I mean, I, I could do a list of things that like I'm interested in, but I do. Uh, and I'm, I, you know, I'm interested in monsters, monsters and the strange and um, uh, you know, the nature of humanity um, and all of that stuff. And I'm but I don't want to duck the question, but I think the thing is, we were talking about this earlier, when you're trying to either write or make music or something, for me the most interesting thing is you, you don't really know what it is you're interested in as you go in. You don't know necessarily what the ideas are and so on. And quite often, I will be in a much better position to answer this in years to come, that you don't, you're not conscious of what it is you're, you're really doing um, in terms of what kind of things you're, 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 you're experimenting with. Mm. So I know that there are the things I'm always interested in, um, mm. but um, I don't sit there thinking, now to explore these themes. It's like, you know, I'm right. gonna write this book. And as to what, uh, you know, I hope, what, what we hope readers might come away with after this, I mean, I primarily just having read a book that impacted them, that leaves them different than it was before, that they loved, uh, and I hope a little bit surprised as well. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to jump on that bandwagon and say yes. I mean, I think, yeah, you hope what you hope, you hope people enjoy what you create. So, yeah, I'll say that. Uh, from Lori Keanu, what was your favorite moment in your writing process with China? Okay, so we have the introduction, the excitement of the architecture, the hope, the dream. And then I would say a favorite. Ugh. I would say like the in the uh, favorite first draft. I mean, favorite I guess has to be like underneath like the first time maybe or something. Um, well, I just know like having seen the book for the first time, you've been it's been very uh, moving to see you so excited because you saw the finished product slightly after I did, and I got to see you see it for the first time. Right, and your reaction was beautiful and delightful to me. I know, but the fam favorite moment of writing or be collaborating yeah. with you, I think it's just every time you shared your work. I don't know if that's my favorite moment, though. That was just like, oh my gosh, China Mieville's writing is amazing. So I'm like, anyway, go ahead. No, I don't want to interrupt you now. No, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm finished. No, I'm, I'm finished. No, because I get thrown by like favorites. I know, I know. You need to think about it. Like worst and favorite. Like worst yeah. is easier than favorite. Right. It's like when people say, "What's you know, what's your favorite record?" And you're like, "I've never heard oh. a record. I've never heard any records." <laughs> yeah. This is such a good question. Uh, although I don't think I have a good answer. This is DJ. Did you have any creative differences on how the book should go? I want to. Uh, that's such a great question. So now is your chance to tell me all the things I did wrong and that you have hated. Why would I do these. that now? <laughs> it's too late and I have nothing to say. This is going to yeah, I mean this is We gonna, didn't we didn't have any no. We didn't have any really It's going to sound conflict. like schmaltz, but we we really didn't, did we? No. No. Because there when there were points where like you came in and said like to me I need something more on B's motivation here I feel like there's something yeah. etc cetera, etc cetera. but that wasn't a disagreement that was the process of discussion of the draft yeah um, I don't think there was anything where we both tried to sort of put our foot down and have a disagreement no no sorry to disappoint it would be nice to have a story no of it wouldn't thrown crockery but uh, only if it had a happy ending um, do you have a favorite place or, lo or, or location where you like to brainstorm and write your books? From Christian. Uh, I mean, it's very boring, but probably my study. I've, you know, over many years, I've, you know, made my study the place I like to do my work in. Um, the time, there was a time when I, if, if I was trying to brainstorm, I, what I would like to do is go for a run, but my knees won't let me do that anymore. So now mm. I go for a walk, which is just not quite the same. I used to write in cafes, but not so much anymore. No, it's, um, I'm, I'm just a homebody these days. Um, okay, here's for, for both of us. From Arlene, what is the most satisfying aspect of this work for you? 
And are there any soul crushing aspects to the process? And if so, how do you get through that? So most satisfying and most soul crushing. How's your soul doing? Oh my God, it's most is like favorite. <laughs> okay, well, all right. So the most satisfying for me, I think, it would be a different, I think it would be a different answer for this book than for most books because most of the things I've written, I've written on my own. Um, I mean, you're, you're never on your own. You're always working with an editor, but you know what I mean. It wasn't such a direct collaboration. And for me, then, the most satisfying aspect is the, the, the feeling the day after you've, you've put the final full stop on and, it's, and there's a draft that's finished. There's a sort of lightness. Um, mm. In this time, again, this is going to sound so schmaltzy, but like it was, it was getting your first reaction and your first reaction being positive. It was mm. like, because I had this huge anxiety that you were going to hate it, you know, and I, I know we'd worked on it and so on. So by then I should have been more relaxed about it, but I was girded for, for you to sort of say, uh, yeah, we, turns out we were thinking very differently all along, but it was a, it was a very, uh, so that was very satisfying because it felt like even if no one else does, the most important person, you know, feels ownership and feels love for this book. So that was probably my most satisfying. What about yours? Uh, the most, 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 most. I would just say that if you, having a dream and a hope of working with you, and then to have that realized and to be here with you now and to have this be alive and present. And soul crushing? Let's bring it down. Oh, soul crushing? There's nothing soul crushing except that it has to end. <laughs> yeah, I, how can I do that? <laughs> You're on. Oh, I'm on. Thank you. Um, how long did it take you to write the book from Daniel? It was, it, well, it depends what you mean by write. And that, I know that sounds like a really asshole thing to say. I don't think we're, I never asked if we should not swear in this. I've just realized Can we swear? Can we swear? We have a thumbs okay. up Okay, okay. we're allowed to swear. Okay, but if it offends you, yeah. we apologize Sorry. in advance. It's not that we're trying to edgelord. It's just it's very difficult to constantly maintain your inner censor and not swear if you have a potty mouth. So it sounds kind of assholish, but it kind of depends what you mean by right, because I would include the planning process. And if you include the planning process, it took probably about a year and a half. But okay, now exclude the planning process. About a year. That was simpler than I thought it was going to be. I was all geared up for, okay. If you had to recommend a musical soundtrack uh, to a company reading the book, Juan asks, uh, what bands or artists would you choose and what kind of music do you usually listen to while you write? You're the musician. What are your go-tos as a reader? And a, as well, a reader I would writer? say for this book, what comes to the top of my mind, Eric Satie, Radiohead, Massive Attack. And John Coltrane. That's so much cooler than mine. Um, I, that's fantastic. And I, you know what I love about this process is that these answers are a complete surprise to me. And after all this time working together, yeah, I did not expect those answers, and that's wonderful. Mm. For me, it would be the same that I wrote it to. Oh well, what? To, which, please do tell. Uh, that I did most of the writing to, which was above all the Gehrig but the instrumental version of the Gehrig's album because I can't write while well, there's um, speech going on. Mm. And all uh, Godspeed You Black Emperor. I mean, that's to write. There's, I like plenty of other music that I think is absolutely wait, brilliant. Wait, wait, but, wait. Oh, sorry. Is there more? Oh, so that's who you write to when you, that's who you listen to when you write. Yeah, but also what I would recommend as a, as a reader. So I answered both questions in one. Oh, okay. I was being efficient. Yeah. It's interesting you said the, the words. Yeah, no, I, I don't. Th I think a lot of writers would say the same thing: is that if you if you've got music with someone sp with with someone singing, there's it, an infiltration, totally. a distraction. Yeah, I'm sure there are exceptions, but no one I know can write to 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 singing. Hmm. From Ray, who is your favorite villain of any genre? Such a good question. Such a good question. Who's your favorite villain? Wait, wait you just said right, it's a okay, favorite yeah, yeah. question. 
so my probably my obvious go to would be the swirly goo in John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. Um, and to the few people in the audience, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but actually, probably the most interesting villains are villains who don't realize how evil they are, who actually think they're good. So like Iron Man is a great villain um, because he's clearly a you know sadistic, psychopathic arms dealer. Mm. And on that basis, the best villain of all time is probably Victor Frankenstein, who thinks he's a wonderful man and is a total monster. For me. What was his... What was Frankenstein's action that you consider him a villain? Turning his back on his creation and leaving it lonely and alone. Yeah. He betrayed it. He does. Yours? <sighs> I don't know. <gasps> That's not fair. You can't, like, no, you go first. Favorite? No, I'm going to do it. Favorite? Now. <laughs> Most. So you're just opting out of all favorite questions. Is that the rule? No, I won't. Okay. I won't be such a cheater. But okay. I mean, what villains? I mean, villains. Who is your favorite villain? Why is it your favorite villain? I uh, I don't know. I mean, villains. Who's the villains? Villains. 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 I'm very tempted villains? to like do one of your enemies from one of your films now. I'm very tempted. No. Who's your favorite villain, Mr. Anderson? No, no. So, know, that's, that's very cheap. I, know, I don't I'm know. Sorry. It's fantastic. Super cheap. Though. But was that a villain? Okay. You see? Villain here? Anyway. Uh, what event in history do you think B enjoyed the most from K? You created B. You cannot opt out of this question. You this created B as well. You cannot opt out of this question. Well, it's an interesting question because the idea of be enjoying anything is straight off the bat an interesting. <sighs> he question. likes ice cream. Who doesn't like? Well, ice he cream? like, but is like and enjoy the same thing? Yes. Okay. No. Fair. Fair reposter. Um, but an event, an event in history. What did he like? Is that human history? Going to be natural history? That's, you. You invented him. You tell me. I'm thinking of maybe a particular celestial event. Do you have anything pop into your mind? I keep thinking about the Thirty Years' War, but I really don't know why. I mean, the Thirty Years' War is in our book, um, mm. and in, that suggests that he's a horrible, horrible creation. Because, like, who would enjoy a war? But I don't mean it in that. But there's maybe for someone as lost and conflicted as him, there's a certain personal freedom. This is kind of like. Almost like what you know. This is almost like what Sartre would say, or something like. Like in the worst moments, there's a certain kind of freedom because you're like ripped from a lot of uh, the normal choices. So maybe for someone like him, that kind of carnage would have forced him into a certain kind of freedom. But I'm groping. I don't really know. I keep thinking. I don't know. Fireworks. The first time I saw fireworks with a, something of a something. That's a great. Answer. Being in love and seeing these humans come up with dancing lights. In some kind of celebration. So it's either beautiful sky colors or a mass murderous war for three decades. Okay. Perfect. Okay, there, there you, go. you go. I'm sorry. All right, there you go. <laughs> Joey, would you want to be immortal? Keanu Reeves, would you want to be immortal? Uh, only on my deathbed. <laughs> I think it depends what's going on around us, surely. Sure. Sure. A different kind of deathbed. Yeah, indeed. Ask me on my deathbed, I'll probably say the same thing. I know, but then we need to grow up and find a way to mature into our mortality or deal with the fear of death. From Adam, if neither of you were in the arts, what would your chosen profession, professions be plural? You get to be a poly something. A poly, okay. <laughs> Um, How modern? Realistically, an academic, in my wilder dreams, a marine biologist or uh, uh, a pen and ink artist. I was I was heading towards academia. I was I was going to be an academic, and then on what? International relations. Oh, yeah. Different than poli sci. 
uh, well, more specialist, but kind of a subset. Um, and this is, we're talking in the birth of the world. This is a long time ago, but. Um, and then Illustrator or yeah, Marine I like Illustrator, I'm just not, as, I'm not good enough to do it professionally, but because it, because Chosen, I, I, I wish I was a better artist. So that would be something I would love to do, but um, I don't think I have the chops to my eternal chagrin. I don't know, I guess it would come out of regret. I don't know, maybe something in athletics. Oh, but yeah. then that has a short lifespan, doesn't it? I don't know. Which sport? If I don't athletics. Know. Hockey, maybe. Uh, Ice hockey. Play a goal. I mean, that's a childhood profession. Like when I was a little kid, it was like race car driver. Um, what is it? Race car driver, conductor of an orchestra, or a nuclear physicist. Don't ask me how a nine-year-old comes up with nuclear physicist, but that happened. And there you go, it says professions, so you get to do all three. Cool. Jordan, uh, what historical figure, singular, do you think, that's me adding the word singular, sorry, it's just to be specific. Mm. What historical figure do you think B would have gotten along with the most and why? I mean, it's gotta be Keanu Reeves, hasn't it? <laughs> that's so meta. Yeah. I mean, we could have a whiskey. Yeah. I think you'd get on. Yeah, we would. We're good. I mean, what's up, dude? Well, I mean, in the novel, he seeks out. He does. Uh, well, the doctor. Yeah. Her doctor. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he seeks out Sigmund Freud. I'm not sure whether that's really getting along with him, though. He respects him and he thinks that he can Who help him. Who does he want to party with? But I, no, I think you want to talk about something. Yeah. I guess I really don't bring that is because it would bring something kind of something new or something that had been introduced or explored that he could benefit from or enjoy interacting with. For some um, reason, I have this image of like historical generals and stuff. And I know he's not a soldier exactly, but I wonder if like Alexander the Great or something, someone who's like... No, hmm. he wants to get away from all that death. No, no, but I specifically Murder. choose Alexander because he's also a scholar. So like they understand death, but like they're also thinking about other things. You know? Yeah. Maybe. But but hey, you invented him. I should hand this over. Who's the famous um sitar player? Ravi Shankar? Yeah. There you go. So Keanu Reeves and Ravi Shankar. I think he'd like to hang out with Ravi Shankar. Sitting in a tree. Okay. In a you know, on a go a tree or something. It's a beautiful image. And have out, you know, some tea and speak about the music of the spheres and transportation. If B were not cursed with violence, do you both think he would still wish to become mortal? Mm. Or do you think he would be satisfied with his immortality? This is from Charlotte. That's a good question. I would say yes. I'm lost. Would you, yes, yes, he would be satisfied? Do you think he would still wish to become mortal? You can't say yes to a question that has or in it. Because then, like, do you think... He would still wish no, to become that, that's, mortal? There's only the first question okay, first. Okay. If B were not cursed okay. with violence, do you both think he would still wish to become mortal? Okay, so he would still wish to become mortal. Yes. Okay. Or do you think okay. he would be satisfied with his immortality? Okay, okay. No. Gotcha. Thank you. My apologies. I agree. Let's move on. <laughs> Keith, besides each other, who is a writer, artist, or storyteller that you admire? I mean, where do you start? There are so many. Um, no specifications about living or dead or anything like that. So Dorothea Tanning is an artist I admire to the ends of the earth. Why? Because very few other artists I have ever encountered make me feel like someone has been watching my dreams from the inside and is quietly letting me know about it. Hmm. You? I don't know their biography that well. Dostoevsky. Why? As you had a, a, someone who could talk to your dreams, I felt like the young person who read those works, even when they didn't understand the idiot for its larger right. implications, received something for my aloneness. So you were spoken to? I was spoken to. But not just, but then also when you 
busts out with the brothers Karamazov, other emanations of self. It's interesting you say, even though you didn't understand the idiot, because I don't want to speak for you, but for myself, I often feel like I'm spoken to most by works that I love and that I don't understand. It's precisely because I don't think I understand them that they that they speak to me. I, I couldn't for a second claim to understand Dorothea Tanning's works and that's that's why she's on my list. I think it is you. What book do you, rem do you remember reading and thinking, wow, that just changed my life? And this is from Scott. I mean, again, so many. Um, Whammo. <laughs> Finished it and went, whammo, I am not the same. Oh, you do this one first. I'm trying to think. Ah. I'm culling um, candidates because I can only say one. I'm going to say Michael Sisko's The Narrator because it expanded my idea of what fantastic literature could do and be and I could never read any fantastic literature the same way again after having read that book. I'm going to choose at this moment an experience connected with a novel. On the Road it was pitched to me somehow as thinking like how I would hear about reading On the Road, Kerouac's novel, mm -hmm. as being this kind of work that was about the liberation and freedom. And, and when I actually read the novel, it was like a sadness, like mm. the kind of like Neil Cassidy as this kind of crushed or trapped animal and this experience of something that was always almost like a lamentation celebration. And then from that, I started to think about and look at don't assume anything and look at what, something from a different way. And then as a kid who did a lot of stuff mm -hmm. that was inspired, like, let's hitchhike, let's go, let's do, let's just go. There was a lot of that. Here's the car, let's go. It's like, yeah, we got to live, we got to be alive. And it was shown to me that there's lamentation and mistake and there's some mm. kind of loss in there. And somehow when I read that novel, it, I learned something. I don't know quite what, but I don't know. So it was like cost. Mm. The cost of the burning bright. That's beautiful. And you, like you say, like um, what you're going to choose now, because we pro probably both could have answered that with totally different books on another day at another yes. time and stuff. Yes. You know? Without spoilers, Kathleen says, without spoilers, Keanu, this is a great question, Kathleen, thank you. Without spoilers, Keanu, is there anything specific from the book that China added that you thought was so original and awesome that it will make its way into the rest of the Berserker universe? Keanu? Well, China, I don't know, I would have to ask you beforehand, but... Um so original and awesome is the uh, terms here. So original and awesome. Original. Awesome. We all have a hand and they're all original and awesome. But um, I don't know, I think I wouldn't make it orig orig original. I mean, if without giving away? Without spoilers, yeah. Well, you could just say yes, but I can't tell you because of spoilers. If that's, you know. Yes, I can't tell you because of oh, spoilers. That was, that's, that's on me. That's, that's on me. That's I'm sorry. That was on me. That was on me. But, but they, they added it into the book. I think the brother's chapter. Okay. Okay. That that story of the, oh. of the brother has an originality to it and a perspective of something that I've not come across. Okay, that's, well, that's a very distinct chapter, very obvious to um, identify, so when people read that, they could imagine it in comic form. Is that, do you disagree with that? No, I think that's, I, I, I honestly didn't think there'd be anything, so I'm delighted. Um, and it makes sense now that you say it, so, yeah. Oh, no, it's you. Sorry. 
When you sit down to write, how do you organize your plot? Did you plot the entire story before sitting down to write? Or did you discover it as you go? And this is from Samuel, and this question is for China. <laughs> well, I mean, you probably already know the answer because we've partly discussed it. But yes, we, we plural, you, plot <laughs> singular, plotted the entire story before sitting down to write. And that was like, doubly important for this book because it was a collaboration and because we had to make sure that we both knew what beats were coming and that you were happy with how I was playing with your toys and that you know it was working and I was happy with how, how it was working. So we spent uh, a lot of time planning out doing the architecture um, and I was even more kind of careful about that than I normally would be. But I would say that for me, if when I'm writing on my own, the answer is the same. Um, because, I mean, I'm not as, uh, you know, I don't have someone to take it to and check in with, but I know there are people who write absolutely beautiful, amazing books who, as you put it, Samuel, discover it as you go, who just go in and write. Um, and to me, these are witches who have made a deal with the devil. I just, I, it's incredible. I don't know how they can do it. I can't put the first word down unless I have an architecture and I know what's happening and I know what's happening at the end. And then sometimes you deviate as you're going in and then, then you stop. I stop, sort out the structure again from that point of deviation. Um, I feel deeply unsafe if I don't have a sense of the whole architecture. I was very pleased to learn that the same is true. I'm not comparing myself, but that the same was true of Angela Carter because her books have this sense of a kind of almost a sort of dream, strange, mythic logic that feels almost like, like it's coming out in a vatic rush. And she planned as neurotically as I do. And it's very counterintuitive and it made me feel very seen. Mm. Cool. Is it me? Yes. Okay. Ashley, um, 80,000 years is a very long time to be alive. What is your favorite thing to imagine be discovering for the first time? Oh, favorite thing to imagine be discovering for the first time. I don't know. Does anything come to your mind? Marmite. No, he didn't. That's not, that's not true. Oh, well, that's the only item of canon that is now non-negotiable, is that he doesn't like Marmite. No, he can like Marmite. Thank you. There you go. That's my okay. answer. I'm sticking to it. Marmite. Okay, well, then it's peanut butter. <laughs> that's no. so basic. You're so basic. It's terrible. Okay. So was breathing. I mean, you already mentioned fireworks. Yeah. Discovery. I would imagine it's something in the natural world. Mm. Like what, like a particular flower or animal or something? Yeah, you know, going underwater or something and seeing something. I don't know, I guess in that sense then, you know, I keep thinking of exotic things, but maybe he is half human. So maybe if we imagine what our favorite things are to discover, like your first experience you had with Marmite, that changed your life, you know? So that, did going underwater for the first time with goggles, I will say, but um, yeah, it's easier to get hold of Marmite, so yeah. Is it me? Yes. No, I did. Oh, right, is actually, it? Yeah. What themes in the Berserker universe would you say are delivered better in novel form than in comic form and vice versa? This question is from Diane. I think that's another fantastic question. I love that question. I'm not sure I would, I, themes is an interesting word. That, that's I the mean, one that I looked at too. To me, I'm not sure I would use the word themes. To me, it's more a question Wait, of- Wait, so you're rewriting the question? Okay, I mean, Diane is not here. She can do nothing about it. Sorry, Diane. <laughs> um, it's an excellent question, and I will oh, now, but now turn it rewrite. into the question I wish to answer. Um, well, because I think you can do themes in both. But what I do think is different is the way you do the themes, which I would talk about in terms of voice and pacing. And what I think that the novel allows you to do is to do a certain kind of polyphony, a certain kind of interiority, and a certain kind of deliberate slowing down, a certain type of pause in a way that you can't do so much in a comic. And conversely, I mean, you can do it, of course you can, you can do anything, but I feel that the novel lends itself better. And conversely, I would say that the comic, and this is not, uh, like, I mean this with deep respect, I think the comic is better at violence. Like, I hope we did good fight scenes in the novel, I'm not saying you can't do them, but 
And there's only so many times you can go, and then he punched with his right hand and it was really cool and it hit the jaw and the jaw exploded, you know, and it becomes very farcical very quickly. Writing fight scenes is, a, is a, you're like walking on a knife edge. Whereas with a comic, you're doing this extraordinary art and you can do this terrible, ghastly, wonderful thing of making this horrendous or act. Or intoxicating. Beautiful. And interesting. You know. Propulsive, yes. So, so you, you, you show this beautiful picture that is of something terrible. So I think a <coughs> comic is better at violence. How about you? So then there's almost like the interiority of characters can be more, you have more time and more not necessarily richly explored in the novel. And the external aspects, perhaps. I mean, loosely, I wouldn't want to say these as hard rules, but yes, I, I, I mean, do you agree? Do you disagree? No. <laughs> Um, Ophelia, uh, were there any passages where you dropped Easter eggs as inside jokes? Love this question. Yes, and I, can I say I love the formulation of Easter eggs because the point of this, Paul Keanu has heard me say this so many times, but the point of this for me is that you don't need to get these references. The, the book does not depend, no, a book that depends on you getting a reference is, is a puzzle. And that's, there's, there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not the kind of book I wanted to do, not the kind of book you wanted to do. So there's various Easter eggs which are supposed to be fun for those people who may see them and who may get them. So there's, and if you don't, doesn't matter. The book is also, you can just follow the story. So there's various Easter eggs um, to bits and bobs of um, the comic. Like we have a whole strand of the, of, the, of the novel which is built entirely around one panel in the comics in the first issue. Uh, there's references to a bunch of 17th century dissident religions. There's a uh, reference to a, a kind of Indian Buddhist logic school called uh, Kachuskoti. I apologize for the butchered pronunciation. There's a bunch of stuff about Freudian theory. But again, I'm aware that this makes me sound really like a wanker. But the point is, it's not obligatory. It doesn't matter. If you get it and you enjoy it, fantastic. But you really don't need to. So, uh, so yes, there's tons. And that's part of the pleasure for me. And, and like, for example, you read someone like Gene Wolfe. Uh, I know, I'm well aware that I'm getting 5% of what's going on in Gene Wolfe's books, but I love what I'm reading. And then every time I come back in, I might see one other reference and go, oh my God, I'm so great, I got that. I now love this book even more. So I know some people feel like references can be kind of snotty and off-putting. To me, if they're done well, and I don't know if, I hope we did this well, they become an act of generosity. It's like you don't need any of them, but if you get them, here's a little extra thing. And if you want to look them up. Yeah, Google is very handy. Was it your question or mine? This you. When you sit down to write, Oh, I'm sorry, this is from Megan. Uh, when you sit down to write, does it feel like you're watching a movie within your head and that the characters surprise you and sort of take on a life of their own the more you show up to write? What does it feel like when you're writing? I want to bat this, I will say what I think, but I want to bat this back to you first. And the reason is that whenever I've heard you talk about the comic and the birth of the comic, you talk in terms of this character kind of coming to you. And I wonder mm. whether you experience that, as the question says, sort of cinematically, like suddenly there's a character in your mind doing these things. Mm. They're surprising you. And then your job is to figure out what's going mm. on rather than the other way around. Right. Do you, do you carve away the material of the stone? Do you, mm. Or is the figure inside the stone already? Um, so when you sit down to write, Chaya, does it feel like you're I watching tried. a movie? I did try. I did try. Does it feel like I you're watching a movie within Megan, your head? I tried. I really does tried. Does it feel like you're watching a movie within your head? No, it doesn't. It, 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 it feels like I'm trying to understand a half visible uh, person seen through gauze walking across a room. And that the characters surprise you and sort of take on a life of, the, of their own the more you show up to write. Did your character be surprise you? All the time. Keanu Reeves. There you go. But that wait, so what hard. does it feel like when you're writing? It depends. I mean, if it's going... There's no one thing. No, I mean, if judgment. it's going well, it's, um, it's flow. I know flow is very trendy at the moment. People talk about flow states and stuff. And I don't mean that in a snotty way. I'm big, it's, it's magical. So when what, 
in, in, in the purest and best sense, when you're writing well, it doesn't feel like anything at all because you're not there, you're flowing. And then you come out of it and you're like, why am I exhausted? Why am I sweaty? Why do I feel happy? You know, mm -hmm. uh, um, if it's not going well, the more you're feeling it, for me, the less well it's going. So if it feels like anything, it's not going that well. I would relate to that in the sense of, I mean, I relate to that, but also, I, I mean, sometimes I take on the voices of the different characters. I know working on the comic book mm. and also with scripts that I write, I'll not only my own character, but other characters, I'll, I'll kind of inhabit their character and speak, you know, dialogue. How literally, like literally walking around the house, muttering to yourself in different voices? No, you see when I'm co collaborating. Right. Yeah. Uh, which character whom you portrayed do you relate to the most? Asks Fiona. Thank you, Fiona. Um, for me, it would be Diana. Not because I am in any way like Diana. I could not be less like Diana. But because Diana is probably of the of the main characters, the most the least of a natural within that environment. She's probably more more of a of, a, of an outsider in the set. You know, mm. we have moments in her head where she's like, I can't quite believe that I'm here. Like that, you know, I, she knows why she's there, but she she doesn't. She always feels a little. And I think that um, I that that sense of, I mean, I guess you could call it imposter syndrome, but it's just that sense of like, what if I'm found out? What if I'm in, you know like that, mm. that? So so I think on that level, that's probably the one who comes to my mind. Mm. What about, what about you, Keanu Reeves? <laughs> she does also have e exceptional talent and genius <laughs> and why she's there. She has, like, she has like four PhDs and she's I know. 28 or something. I can't no, remember now. She's but 32. She's 35, 37 yeah. or something. Which character whom you portrayed do you relate to the most? Tang. B. Doesn't that question means about characters you portrayed in movies because it's it, only it, literally just occurred to me i thought we were talking about the book and portrayed in the wider sense but i feel like i may have hijacked that question i think that may have been a question about john wick versus neo versus yeah it might have been okay but but okay. no it's berserker now sorry, sorry. were there any part i mean if i had to answer that then i can't answer that question um most I was just in a book zone. I didn't Most. mean to be an asshole. I was just no, oh, in a no, book zone. No, no, no. Yeah, okay. no. I, I got it. Yeah. Fiona we did portray it. them. We portrayed them with words. I know. Okay. I know. Okay. Yeah. Um, were there any parts that got cut in the editing process that you wished stayed from Molly? That's another great, great question. Um, no, because actually I think what happened was uh, we added a couple of things that I think the, the editing in this case, and this isn't always the case, but in this case was more a question of adding than taking out. Um, so I can, think of, I can think of one section where there was a debate about whether or not to cut something. Samuel Beckett. And I'm glad that we didn't. Yes. So that's about as close as I can get to that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, is it me? Um, ben, uh, if B... W Did we do this one already? If you were not cursed with violence... If B were not cursed with violence, do you both think he would still wish to become mortal? We did this one, right? Uh, maybe it was a different kind of take on that. Or do you think he'd be satisfied with his immortality? I'm, I have a real strong sense that we've done this one already. I'm confused. Okay. Um, but maybe not. I think we I think we thought that he would still want to Yes. Yeah, okay. Well then that didn't really count. Okay. <laughs> what does yours count? What is your advice for first time writers? Ask? Sorry, we haven't been very systematic about the cars. That's what's happening. We've sort of No, no, them. no. They were they okay. they've sits in there too. Um what is your advice for first time writers? asks Julie. Um my advice for first time writers is nothing you're not going to find all over the place, nothing that everyone hasn't said before, but nonetheless, I will say the things that everyone says that I think are useful. One is plan your novel in advance. Not everyone needs to do it, but I think if you're, if you're new to it, it makes life much easier. Do 500 words a day, only think in terms of 500 words a day. Stay offline. No, I mean it, get offline. No, 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 I mean it, get offline. No, 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 turn it off. No, put it in a drawer. No, I mean it. That would be my advice. Um, 
Okay, so we have five minutes left. Oh, five minutes left. Sorry, thank you. Right, good. No, I no, failed at one of my good. few tasks, which was no, like, no, no, it's fine. No, no, no. You see okay, when okay. I'm waving at wait, you wait. For five minutes, in your head, Cannon. In your head, Cannon. What is the <laughs> most important historical event that B quietly influenced? The, uh, the First World War. Keanu. Sounds good. <sighs> Uh, all right, you're answering the first, next one first. No, first, okay. With all of your different... In oh, I'm sorry. That was yeah. David yeah. Uh, from Caesar. With all your different endeavors going on, what made you decide to write fiction? Because it's really fun. Um, how did you overcome periods of writer's block from Luigi? Didn't have it in this book simply because it was a collaboration worked differently normally by tr switching to a different project. Switch to a different project and then come back. Exactly. Of course. What is your approach to work? This is from uh, Shane. What is your approach to world building? Do you start with a world in mind and then consider the stories you could tell there? Or do you begin with the kernel of a story and then consider what type of world it implies? It depends on the book. In this case, the world building was already initiated. So uh, story first in this case, but it depends on the book. Ha ha ha. What is your favorite all-time novel from Jane, Brooke? You first. No, come on. You I, first. You've heard about you my first. favorites and mosts. And oh, my God. I'm Jane Eyre. Like, really? Yeah. If you could have dinner with anyone. What, was, that a, was that a really of dismissal or of surprise? I don't know. I've never read Jane Eyre. Oh what would God. I do? Go this was it part right of like, Go I, right now I, and I read it. it. Okay. Okay. If you could have dinner with anyone, who would it be? This is from Poe. Keanu Reeves. Oh, my God. God, William Shakespeare, whoever that may be. For both, which of you, which of uh, the others' work made you first realize, hey, this guy's a damn good writer, Joey? Who did you first read, and you went, wow, this guy's a damn no, good reader? No, he's talking about us. No, I think no. He, which of the others' work, the other, we are the, the others', others work to each other. made yes. you first realize, hey, this guy's well, you didn't. I mean, well, maybe. No, I, I can answer that from my perspective. You already said it was the short stories of mine. Yes, uh, from my perspective. It was when you gave comments on B's characterization needed. I know that's not quite, but nonetheless, you asked like, what was B's, you had problems with B's characterization. And I was like, he's absolutely right. This needs work and his suggestions are going to make this much better. We've read about B, thank you. We've read about B in the past and B in the present. Would you ever consider writing a berserker story set in the future by Mary Beth? That's a great question. These are such good questions. Would you? What, in the set in the future? Yeah. Yeah, you know, like the question you just read. <sighs> yes. Two minutes. I think we're out of questions. Any, any, any questions in the room? Anyone have anything they want to ask? No, but we can say thank you. We should. We have time to do both, but yes. Okay. No, okay. Okay, well then, okay, then let's go back. Okay, so then, um, my favorite moment with uh, writing the novel with you. Well, I still don't have an answer, but because it, it's got the most in it. But <laughs> just invent something. Okay. Uh, what's the thing with the thing writing the thing? And I think that was um, okay. Let's not do that. I, I, I picked a I picked the wrong. Thing. Okay. But why did that happen? I don't know why that happened. Why did that happen? I think your favorite <sighs> moment is the pig. I think. I think. I know that you don't think it is, but I think you. I think it is. I think that that's because the way you talk about it when you talk about it. I know there's lots of things you like, and that's great, but yeah. I think the way you talk about the pig is. I know, like when that sequence, when we see what happens to the the why and the how and the what of of the deer pig. Sorry, none of you will understand that, but you will soon, I hope, and that's good. Um, Very touching. I don't know, we're out. Thank you so much. These, I, genuinely, I have to say, these have been fantastic questions. I am not blowing smoke. I have been really, really impressed and moved by these questions. And mm. it, when we're, you're doing things like this, mm. inevitably you hear, you hear the same questions a lot, which is fine, I understand it, but to have a, a whole set of questions, set, many of whom have not been asked before is amazing. Mm. So for me, this has been really fascinating. Yeah, it was fun, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Hope you enjoy the book.